Hello, I'm Captain Robert McCullough and welcome to the Police Report, brought to you by the men and women of the Baltimore County Police Department. This program brings you information on crime trends, crime prevention techniques, and information on police department activities and operations. In today's program, we'll be speaking with Captain Mike Cortez of the Baltimore County Police Department's Operation Support Section. He will be telling us about the department's traffic safety program and will provide us with some traffic and pedestrian safety tips as school begins. Later in the show, we will talk with Captain Donna Benton of the Wilkins Precinct. She will be telling us all about her precinct and update us on some of the latest activities since becoming the precinct commander. Police Department responds to numerous vehicle and pedestrian crashes each year and unfortunately many of them can be fatal. The reality is that many vehicle and pedestrian crashes in Baltimore County can be prevented. With me to talk about traffic and pedestrian safety is Captain Mike Cortez. Mike, welcome to Police Report. Thank you, Ralph. Now, Mike, how long have you been a member of the Baltimore County Police Department? Uh, just over 24 years. And how long have you been the uh, commander of the uh, the operation support section. Uh, it's only been a few months, approximately four or five. Now, for our viewers, uh, give them an idea of some of the units that are contained in the operation support section. It's a pretty big section. And you guys have a multitude of responsibilities. That is correct. Uh, I have the DWI task force under me. DWI task force goes out there and enforces the laws that have to do with DWI enforcement. They make arrests. Uh, they do a fantastic job. I have a community traffic safety officer. That community traffic safety officer manages our grants and teaches at schools, teaches about pedestrian, bus safety, and all those kind of um, topics. Uh, also have the mobile crisis team. Mobile crisis team goes out there and they help assist people with mental illness or suicidal subjects, and they are a huge part of helping out the district with their functions. I also have the auxiliary team. The auxiliary team you see out there, different parades, different functions, they're a volunteer unit. We also have the school crossing guards. School crossing guards, obviously, they help us out at this time right now, uh, crossing the kids to make sure everybody crosses safely and within the crosswalks. Uh, I also have the commercial vehicle enforcement team. Commercial vehicle enforcement team, what they do is they inspect trucks. They keep the road safe with the commercial vehicles that are on the road every day. I also have the uh, workplace violence team. Workplace violence team goes out there. They do assessments for different businesses. They also teach at many businesses. They also teach our human resources section and other sections within the Baltimore County Police Department and outside of that and other agencies. Um, I also have a multitude of other traffic safety teams that right now um, are out there doing their job. Okay. Okay, sounds like you guys are very busy. Very now, busy. if our viewers want, you know, there's a couple things that they can actually get involved with. Um, for example, um, if someone wanted to be a school crossing guard or if they're looking for a part-time job and they want to help out the county and help children out, yes. they can become a school crossing guard. That is correct. And, and how can they go about doing that? Uh, we have a school crossing guard administrator within our office also, mm -hmm. and he is easy to contact, and he could provide all that information. He also works hand-in-hand -hand with our personnel services section. And uh, if they, they might want to take on the responsibility of being an auxiliary police officer. That's basically a volunteer police officer. They get a uni, uh, uniform and they actually go out and they help us at, at all types of details. Correct. Um, if they're interested in that, they can contact your unit also? Yes, yes. And the extension would be 410-887-7361. That would be the main number. Mm -hmm. And then you could ask somebody there which direction you want to take. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do have, yes, someone that's in charge of the auxiliary team, Sergeant Mike Arnold. He does a fantastic job and it's a very large unit we have just about 200 members right now currently that are auxiliary team members within Baltimore County Police Department now tell us why is traffic and pedestrian safety such an important issue in Baltimore County it's very important I mean we want to keep the roads safe within Baltimore County I mean just last year in 2015 we handled over 15,000 reported accidents uh, also, unfortunately, we had over 60 fatalities on our roads within Baltimore County. 19 of those fatalities were pedestrians. It's all about being safe out there, safe driving, 
not being distracted, not being under the influence of alcohol, uh, also just obeying the posted speed limits. Mm -hmm. Also for the pedestrians, let's not cross in between cars, let's not dart out into traffic, make sure we use those crosswalks and not only our crosswalks, make sure you wear some sort of bright clothing when you're walking at night or maybe even jogging down the road early in the morning that would assist us. We don't want to see any more fatalities than we need to. And of course, uh, many pedestrians don't understand how dangerous it is when they don't cross the street. Many times people don't cross between the crosswalks where they're supposed to and they cross in the middle of traffic and it causes a lot of those pedestrian accidents. Um, I believe we have some video that kind of demonstrates what happens when a pedestrian is crossing the street and a vehicle is traveling at a certain speed. Let's take a look at that video. Great. Now this is at 25 miles per hour yes. and the braking the, of course, the driver is able to stop at 25 miles an hour. Correct. Now, just 10 miles or more, 35 miles per hour. Right. See, just that difference in 10 yes. miles per hour yes. makes a difference in whether somebody's hit or not. And just that short, short period of time could be any type of distracted driver or someone under the influence mm -hmm. or just not paying attention whatsoever. And when you're talking about distracted driver, you know, you're talking about that danger of somebody texting and driving Yes. or not paying attention and talking on their telephone or dialing their cell phone. Correct. Those things cause accidents. Correct, correct. That's why now there's legislation, obviously, that has changed that with putting laws on the books that anywhere between 70 and $160, depending on what offense it has been. Uh, it could be a first offense, second offense. Now there is no points associated with that violation, but still, anything that contributes to an accident and nobody wants to have that hanging over their head that they would distract the driver and cause such an accident such as this. And of course, um, our pedestrians need to make sure that they stop, look, listen both directions Correct. when they're crossing the street, but they also need to make sure that they're between the crosswalk and uh, especially if they have young children, yes. that, they, that they're holding those young children in their hands. And, yes. um, and another problem we see is, is that people actually walk you know, looking at their cell phones yes. or playing games and things like that. Yes, yes. Recently I did see that actually had a fatality accident where there was a cell phone being used as a person was walking in the dark, not in a crosswalk. At nighttime? At nighttime with no reflective clothing on. Can you tell us briefly what happened in that situation? Uh, it's still on the investigation, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I do know from watching video of it that yes, that did occur where the person was, literally had the cell phone because you could see the light and them dialing numbers. Now another uh, important factor in uh, pedestrian and traffic safety is the whole education piece. Um, how important is uh, traffic and pedestrian education um, in Baltimore County? It's huge. It's huge. We just want to save lives. We want to make the roads safe. And we have our community traffic safety team that goes out and she does a fantastic job teaching at the schools of pedestrian safety and, and driver safety, obviously, at the high school and also going to the community meetings within the precincts. Also, she reaches out to any other groups that want a presentation, whether it be a business or anything of that sort. We also put it out over social media any way we can. Obviously, that's a huge tool for anybody right now. And that social media aspect, the newspapers, the news outlets and the show such as that. Now another thing we use is technology to kind of slow people down. Yes. Um, you know with people speeding and accidents all of that equates to increase insurance cost yes. to, to, to the people who live in Baltimore County. Yes. Um, one of the tools that we use is the uh, the speed camera enforcement um, around the schools. Correct. Tell us how that works. Well under Maryland law it has to be a designated school zone. Mm -hmm. That's first. Uh, then we have approx we have many many cameras throughout the, the Baltimore County. Mm -hmm. um, these cameras there uh, they are set up to register and issue a violation if you are speeding, which is above 11 miles over the posted speed limit. Mm -hmm. So once you hit that 12 miles per hour, you will be issued a citation. We have sworn police officers in that automated enforcement unit mm -hmm. that review all of the violations, and once they're reviewed, is when those citations are issued and sent out. Uh, we have approximately, um, if I remember correctly, uh, somewhere in the ballpark of about 60 cameras out there right now. And I could be off, but I remember somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But it's important for our viewers to know also is that we have in Baltimore County that review process where we look at it. Yes. And if there's a ticket that it's, uh, there's any question that we have about it, we don't send that ticket out. Is that correct? Correct, correct. That, that equipment is checked every day daily in the beginning 
when they start processing the citations, it's checked by a, a sworn police officer. Those cameras also operate, I should have said this earlier, between Monday and Friday, between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. at night, whether school's in session or not. And we also have, uh, I believe, red light cameras out there still? That is correct. We have 10 red light cameras at different intersections within Baltimore County. They operate under the same premise where the officers check the camera system in the morning and then they also check to make sure that the violations are correct and that there's no um, problems with the camera. Now with school starting and school buses being on the road again, mm -hmm. what would you like to say to our viewers and the people of Baltimore County about passing school buses? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a misconception that on those two lane roads that you don't have to stop because the bus is on one side of the road. Both sides of traffic must stop. The only way that you don't have to stop is if there's some sort of physical barrier in between those lanes. If there's possibly a jersey wall, if there's possibly a sidewalk, a grass median, then the other side of traffic does not have to stop. But any other time, you must come to a complete stop and wait for that bus to pull off before you further. Okay, and if our viewers see a violation, how do they go about reporting that violation? They just need to call 911, but they must have the tag number, the vehicle description, and it would assist us also if you have a description of the driver, that would also assist us. And once again, also with that violation going past that school bus, you're looking at a $570 fine possibly and three points on your license. That's a pretty expensive ticket. Yes, it is. Now, um, kids will also be walking back and forth to school. Um, what would you uh, tell parents and children about walking back and forth to school when walking to school? That they need to use those crosswalks. That's a primary. If there's a school crossing guard at that intersection, use that crosswalk. Even if there's not, use that crosswalk. We can't have kids darting out in between cars. It happens too often. And another thing could be possibly maybe when it's, you know, in the, the winter's coming up, dark in the morning, maybe put some sort of reflective tape on the back of the backpack. That may help. And wear some maybe bright clothing. And, and what about um, people who are riding bikes? Well, what would you say to motorists and citizens about that? Always remember that three-foot rule. Give that three-foot space between you and that person on that bicycle or that bike um, because it's so important. Once again, you can't come too close. It's just an accident waiting to happen. Now, you've had a pretty incredible career. What would you say to young people that are interested in, in, in a career in law enforcement? What would you tell them? I would definitely tell them that every day is not the same. Uh, there's always something occurring every single day different from the day before. No two days are the same. Uh, I feel if you want to help people, uh, the citizens of Baltimore County, kids, um, and, and act as a mentor possibly, and get out and be with the community that you grew up in or that you currently are living in, uh, I think that's huge. And if you want to help people, this is the job. Okay. Thank you. As you can see, the operation support section along with its traffic teams have a challenging mission. However, you can help them by simply following the traffic and pedestrian safety tips provided by Captain Cortez today. Remember, watch out for kids who may be walking to school and make sure you stop for all school buses. We would like to thank Captain Mike Cortez for being with us today on Police Report. Thank you very much, Rob. Coming up next on our program, we will speak with Captain Donna Benton. She will tell us all about the Wilkins Precinct and update us on some of the activities in her precinct since becoming the precinct commander. But first, this message.